Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I am your host. The inspiration for this series is to show the amazing lives that people live. The key word here is live. I hope to capture through interviewing many wonderful Vermonters and even a few people outside Vermont, some stories of their lives and experiences for our audience while they are still very much alive. Over the years, I have read too many obituaries that left me pondering, why did I not have a chance to meet this wonderful person while they were alive? The goal of this program is to celebrate the lives of everyday Vermonters while they are still very much with us. Some people will be recognized uh, by many viewers, and lots of people I plan to interview will be known only by a few close, intimate friends and family. I will guarantee you that all the people who are interviewed will have fascinating stories to share with you. See, I'm of the notion that everyone has a story to tell. If you would like to be interviewed or know someone that you think would make for a great interview, please contact me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Also, if you have a question for the interviewee after the show, and would like to send me a, a, a little email that I can get to the interviewee, um, please do. Again, it's at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Leave your uh, name and phone number or email address, and I'll get back in touch with you, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, today, I am very honored to have as our guest, Joan Lennis. Uh, Welcome, Joan. Thank you and, very uh, much. <laughs> wow. now, you have led an amazing life, Joan, of public service. Um, and let me just tick off a few of these things for the audience so that they can appreciate all the things that you've done. You were a Vermont legislator for 12 years. You were the chair of your local PTO, school board member. This is Shelburne, Vermont, the founder of um, the uh, Robin's Nest Children's Center, board chair of Emerge Vermont, and I want to talk more about that uh, later. That's an incredibly important piece to Vermont. Also board chair of Age Well, and one time an owner of Climb High. Is that correct? That is. Amazing. Now, and it's also led to you um, having a number of awards, uh, the Community Service Award at Shelburne Community School, the Champlain Housing Trust Hilton Wick Give Until It Hurts Award, <laughs> and the Vermont Democratic Party Curtis Hoff Award. Just amazing. And I want to thank you for all of your community service um, over the years. So I want to go back, if, if you will, to uh, Joan as a young girl. And what were some of the foundational pieces of your early life that led you to be the amazing woman that you are today? Well, Gary, when you invited me on this, I, I thought a lot about it. And I, I, as I said earlier to you before we started, you know, got nervous, like, what is this all about or who am I? And, and it's really quite an honor because I think all of us need that time to reflect and see who we are and what impact we've made. Um, I don't think about the impact. I don't think about the connections, but for me, relationships are, are really everything. And um, I was born in Connecticut, in New Britain, Connecticut. Um, my ancestry is, is I'm Assyrian, so Persian. My father immigrated, my mother's parents immigrated. They met, it wasn't quite a matched marriage, but but it kind of was. Mm -hmm. And they were married in um, 1939 and uh, lived in Connecticut. My father passed away when I was two. Mm -hmm. So in 1953, and my mother was a 36-year-old woman with four children. Wow. And my grandmother, his mother, lived with us. So those are the beginnings I remember and hearing a lot about my father um, from people who loved him and admired him. And we were a family of the four kids, my mother, grandmother, till I was oh, eight or nine. And she remarried and, and life changed. My grandmother passed away 
and we moved to Florida. And Florida was very different for me. I knew I didn't fit that well in the South. Um, there were experiences with um, me getting spoken with at school because I said, yes, please, or no, thank you. And I didn't use ma'am. So mm. I didn't understand mm. that, but you really needed to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir. And, and so I, I wondered if I fit and it, I, I wasn't sure. And mm. um, uh, I knew, well, it, for those who don't know, I'm 4'11 at my highest height <laughs> and shrinking. And there was a water, there were two water fountains in the grocery store. One was shorter, one was taller, and I drank from the shorter one. It was third or fourth grade, and the store manager really, he, he grabbed me and said, where's your mother? So I was reprimanded for drinking out of the one that I didn't see the sign that said colored. Oh. And I said, Ma, wow. what, you know, so it was yeah. I, that, that not quite fitting, trying to figure out life. Um, uh, my, we were, we were a close family. We didn't accept my stepfather right away, but certainly now in our life, we're very close. Mm -hmm. My mother passed away like 20 years ago. So, and he's still, you know, in, in our lives and very close. So, so I think that the solid base of the Assyrian community in Connecticut and then uprooting and going to Florida was a was mm. an adjustment that, that I didn't quite realize. I've got dear friends in Florida that were, you know, still in touch with kids I grew yeah. up with. But but it was different and um um trying to fit in. Yeah, how did so given that um mm -hmm. going from a, a, a kind of a wonderfully supportive environment in Connecticut to environment that you just wasn't sure if this worked for you where did you find solace what did you do to to you know make life better for yourself I mean how did how did you navigate that I think I tried to make friends with people that I could talk with that I connected with there were a group of five of us girls that would spend the night at each other's homes hmm. and um, and kind of look for things. It wasn't like I wasn't happy or fitting in, but it was it was a huge adjustment and and sure. looking for friendships. Um, and I like to do things. Our neighbors were were a funny couple from Kentucky. They had moved. They had a son. Um, who was my brother's age, and I just kind of went over there, and I'd make mm. myself at home. I, I, they, you would tease me because I'd look through their mail and whatever, and <laughs> I thought that was kind of normal. I just, I just kind of, I didn't bulldoze, but just was comfortable. Sure, and sure. And the the joke was, they'd say, "What what do you have for supper?" And I'd say, "Oh, steak." It, it didn't matter what we had. I called it <laughs> steak and they were having, you know, corned beef hash. They had uh, come from Kentucky, taken every penny that they could to get down mm. to Florida. So I just, I just kind of, yeah. you know, got myself in different, in different situations. I liked babysitting. I, mm. I did that a lot. And, and, um, one of the things, I don't know if this goes into a question for you, mm. but I, I like to do things more than sit and, you know, I wasn't the yeah. student in the classroom, but um, in uh, President Kennedy's era, he did the um, athletic, the uh, health, uh, um, uh, the fitness the fitness yes, program. Yes, yes, yes. And and our our phys ed coach um, asked me to help him. So mm. the students would do you know ten sit ups or whatever, and I had the clipboard and I re would write down Gary DeCarlo's ten or yep. you know whatever. Yep. And so yep. the next week we'd say Gary, you did ten. Let's do twelve. 
and and I didn't even know what that meant. But sure. it was it was me getting involved. I, I don't know if my teacher wanted me out of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go down that road, okay. please. So, <laughs> but but I, yeah. I, I I like to do things that were active as opposed right. to passive. Right, which is very much you today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, as a little girl, did you have um, people that you looked up to? You know, I mean, it sounds like your mom was very special in your life. No question about that. Yes. Um, yes. And then, but outside, you know, people that you look to, to for um, how they live their lives or things that you imagine yourself someday being like? I think my brother was someone who there, so there are three girls and and one boy mm -hmm. and i used to think a tom, being a tomboy was fun and cool and so i learned how to change oil on his cars um uh wash the car um do things like that and i liked his way he he could be um loud not i mean i knew the 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 sensitive part of him and yep. i think we were we were kindred spirits in in that way um there in florida there was a teacher that i i liked how she maneuvered like i i almost was watching how people were with others and this yeah. teacher was sensitive to others who couldn't learn in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that, and in college, I went to the University of Florida and um, there was a sociology professor that had us do community work. And it was the first time I understood what experiential learning was or being involved. And nope. you know, I can't remember his name, but but I I have thought of him often mm -hmm. that him pushing us to do that. Yep. And I I think I've have felt better about myself in those situations than I did in a classroom with a test. Yep. Um yep. I think uh that that's a bit of who I am. So when things have to be um done that i i like doing that you know people yeah. say oh you're always involved but it's 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 not a selfish thing but it's really because i enjoy it mm -hmm. i'd rather and and when you know what's going on it you you have a chance to play a role rather absolutely. than waiting for the news yes um, absolutely yeah so you and yeah. you engage in life <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> my, my mother used to tease me that the phone would ring, I'd get a shower and be ready to go. But I didn't know who called or where I was going. But I think that was her her not so so <laughs> welcoming yeah. way of telling me. <laughs> but yeah, I I do I do like that. I didn't Anything? think of it as engaging in life, but it is. Yeah, yeah. Anything about your mom that you want to share? Oh, you know, she was, we always said you, you wanted to be her friend and not somebody who she didn't want to mm. be around, but, but she had a way of connecting. And I think that connection is what, what I know is the most important thing in life. I mean, Gary, yours and my relationship, how we met years ago with your your former ed position at turning point and then the 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 connections she our home was welcoming that group of five of us even if i was not home any of them would go over and talk to ma and and mm -hmm. so i think i think that um i didn't realize how important her way was to keep us all together um um and yep. uh, we we tease our stepfather now, saying, 
we weren't very nice. And, he, and I said, why did you stay? He said, you know, I loved your mother and I knew how important you kids were to her. Uh-huh. So I took, I took a back seat to, to that. So, uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. When mm-hmm. you were a young girl, did you have uh, thoughts about what you wanted to do when you grew up? I figured I would be in um, human serve in, in human resources and personnel. Mm. There was um, Jordan Marsh in Florida, and I liked being with people. I didn't. I figured business. That's what what yeah. I might do. But working with people, you know, the kind of I, I always knew healthcare was important. That that or benefits, you know, time mm-hmm. off. Um, Mm -hmm. things like that were important. Mm -hmm. So, so I thought I'd go that way. And I think Jordan Marsh had a program for business that they may have done collaboratively with a junior college. And um, actually my first year of college, I stayed home and went to the junior college Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't, it wasn't right. It wasn't good. I didn't want to live at home. And other friends had gone on to the university as freshmen. So I transferred to Gainesville to the University of Florida. And um, and I knew the people things, but business wasn't making sense. And um, um, I, I don't remember, I think an advisor was talking to me about a major in sociology um, was something. And I thought Margaret Mead, Mm. was you know she she explained things well and i loved yeah. the past yeah. and then how it played into the the present and the future so and and i remember i didn't need a lot of statistics and things like that for a sociology degree as opposed yeah. to i looked at education and things so mm-hmm. so um again the classroom was not where i loved to be yeah. or thrive but I did understand the connection between theoretical and practical. And mm. that that has helped. You know, there mm. is all the stuff we talk about research based and all that. It's right. it's important to know. It's important to have that balance of yes, you can do it hands on, but there are things you don't need to recreate and let's right. do things that are proven that, you know, whether it's scientific from our our past 18 months with covid or or right. you know the theoretical that makes sense in 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 addiction in corrections um so so i liked understanding I liked that. that balance between theory and practice must have helped you as a legislator yes yes yeah mm-hmm. and you know i i remember applying to graduate school it didn't, I had moved up here in, in um, 73 after college. My sister had married a Burlingtonian. And, and so I would come every summer and loved Vermont. Vermont fit. Um, mm. So after college in Florida, I came back up here and, um, and it made a difference. And I, I was working I worked retail and then I worked at the University of Vermont in the Center for Service Learning. Mm, back then yes. and they placed interns so i would develop placements for students help students with that and then um the the um seminars that we put together for for credit for them as well but bringing together theoretical and practical so how they functioned in their internships and how they brought that back to um you know their their degree uh, endeavors. And I took the GREs one morning, one Saturday morning, and it was, it was not easy for me. <laughs> and I, then I, I came home, I went for a run. I think there were probably tears in there thinking I'll never get into graduate school. And, and, and it hit me that I needed to do the running and the, the stuff. I couldn't really do the testing, but I knew what it was about. So I think for me that 
that run and that day was, yes. wait a minute, there is a place for me. Yes. There is. And um, I did get into graduate school. I worked at the same time and, and was very, very appreciative of the university's um, tuition remission for employees. Mm. And, and uh, mm. they still carry that forward and, and such a valuable Absolutely. program. Um, and what did, so, you get your, so, what did you get your degree in? Graduate it school. was an it, it, it master's of education um, and interdisciplinary. So okay. um, 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 counseling and um, coordination of things. Oh my God, what's my degree? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it's not administration, but a lot of, right. of that. So you can run programs. Um, uh, yep. Did you yeah. find that master's degree opened up a whole new uh, world in terms of employment for you? Well, I loved the Center for Service Learning in that mm -hmm. helping students put all mm -hmm. that together. And, and I, I would say it might be the most important thing if you learn you don't want to do something. Um, you know, the Howard Center way back then had the Ease program, and, yeah. and we would place students to work with, with um, some of the clients at Howard. And I knew um, that was so important. And at the same time that my husband, he had Climb High. And I would work I weekends or evenings after UVM, you know, with him there. Yep. And then uh, we married in 80 and started a family in 82. And um, Keith Miser was dean of students at the university. And I, was, I took a year off to have my daughter, Sarah. And um, Keith Miser called me and said, all right, we're looking at restructuring. I want to know what you're doing when you, you know, come back in a year, um, yeah, you know, my yeah. year was almost up. I said, oh, and I, I loved being home. I, mm -hmm. I had the luxury of that. I could go to climb high and work when I wanted, but I could be right. with Sarah. And um, so I said, well, Keith, you design the program and it might not have my position in it, and then I don't have to come back. I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> so, <That's right. laughs> so, you know, I was home, but but um, Sarah was nine months old when when a oh. dear friend and colleague son was killed in a car accident. And I um, I was with her a lot. And then I needed care for Sarah. Mm. So the Lund home then had a drop in center. Mm -hmm. for child care and you didn't have to have a, a full or part-time slot and I knew of that and got her enrolled in that as a nine-month-old so I could be with my friend oh. and about a year or so later the the Lund home then the now the Lund Center didn't um, again, childcare wasn't a, a yeah. financially feasible thing, and yeah. they didn't want to go that route, so they told us we had to get out, and yeah. or they were closing it. But there were a few of us and our director that said, "No, we want to stay together," and we we scoured Chittenden County and found space at St. Joseph's School. Um, yeah. Enrollment wasn't really declining quite then for for the uh, Catholic school, but there was a room we could rent. Mm. And so we did that. And that was fulfilling. And yet I had the schedule of flexibility. So I was the founding mother there with others, not on my own, but, yep, but yep. certainly there were like three or four of us. And Luann Beninati, the... Um, woman who had been the director at, at the Lund was, I, we, we all came together. Oh. And so board work started really at, at Robin's Nest, um, okay. September 11th of 85, we opened the doors. Wow. So you yeah. saw a gap in, in, a need in the community and a gap and um, personally, as well as for other families and therein 
robin's nest yeah yeah wow. still thriving still thriving still, still amazing program and um and we, we luann and i are still friends and we'll say my god we had no clue what we were doing but it was the right thing and i think i think maybe that's what i've done along my path is just do whatever and hopefully it's it's right with the right intention scary i think yes things yes. things work it's not like there's no bumps or no wrong turns but Absolutely. but hopefully that that persistence is is a good thing yes and the willingness to step into the void you know one of the key pieces of leadership is that leader needing to take that risk because it could fail so i mean there's no guarantees yeah. when you do that yeah and you were yeah. able to step into that void and and with you and friends make that work. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And I think that's what set me off on the path. And when the kids were in public school, you know, PTO was was an important piece then. This yeah. is the early 80s and did that. And then um I I think of it as as a ripple effect in in a body of water and you know, Robin's Nest was small, PTO next. Then mm -hmm. folks said, why don't you run for school board? And I said, well, that's an elected thing. I'm not going on any ballot. I'm not <laughs> asking. <laughs> well, you know, back then, school board members, <laughs> you didn't need to, to compete at all. <laughs> so I ran for wow. Shelburne and, um, and actually wasn't on Shelburne's board very long, a, a gentleman who really was in opposition to the math program um, mm. ran a campaign and said, I was so connected to the math and the way the principal wanted to go and it was horrible. And I lost a reelection by 11 votes. Oh my God. But, but yeah, oh, it was devastating, but then we needed fundraising for the um, Shelburne Community School Playground, the Snelling Park, and and I did that. So so uh, one thing, you know, yeah. it, it rolls into another. You, you yeah. can't, I, I try not to be devastated or take things so personally, you know, right. so I lost, but then, then a position opened up on CBU on Champlain Valley Union High School Board. So, and, and I I love policy. It, it's important. Mm. Mm. Where did you get that, that you love policy? Where did that come from? Not everyone does. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's that seat at the table that I like. So design, uh, there you, design go. you know, if, if you believe in, um, all right, we'll go to your world. If you believe um, addiction is a disease, then you design policy, policy to solve it. If yeah. you believe it's a horrible thing and people are bad and stupid because they're addicts, then you, you design policy like that. Gotcha. So it's putting your, your thoughts out there to make things how you want them to be, how you yeah. might dream, but but even more reality than a dream, what yeah. what you want to offer. You know, experiential learning again, a piece of who I am. So you offer it in high school that that students can learn outside of a of a classroom yeah. and and benefit from that. So so I think I think some of that I understood what policy design and mm. and you get to work finance. Now I'm not a financial whiz, but but I know when you put dollars into areas, you put attention there, and yes. and that I think is is important to understand and That's and right. design that way. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me about, if we can, we'll switch a little bit. Tell me about your family. And you've been married for quite a long time. You have a wonderful family. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> what does family mean to you? Oh, uh, you know, family is, um, 
it's the core. It's where you learn your your values and hopefully your support system. And you know, my uh, we do um, uh, the um, when we go to school for reviews or whatever. And in Shelburne, the kids participated as well. And mm. and so the three of us, and then the teacher, and um, they would be talking and and. Uh, about how amazing the kids are or, or each individual. And, and um, my husband especially would say, oh, th at home, they, they challenge us a bit or whatever. And he's mm -hmm. from Austria and, and the Germanic you know, behavior of, of being more strict is what he knew as a student and growing mm -hmm. up in Austria. And, um, and they, I would say, you know, let them lose it at home let them challenge us or come back at us. Not that it was easy, but, yeah. but you know, know how to be with people. Um, and I think those are the things um, I remember if either my husband or I were, were, you know, mad at one of the kids, the other one who might not agree with them in most of the situations, but would defend this, their sibling. And the mm -hmm. other, you know, a, a da our daughter is older and than our son, and and um, interesting to watch that happen. Yeah. Like I can, I can yell at you, but don't somebody else. I'm going to defend <laughs> That's you. That's right. And, and um, uh, you know, my my siblings, my brother has passed away, um, almost twenty years now, and and so my sisters, you know, it's important, and and I'm close with with my sister's children too, so. Um, family is is all that the the bad the good and what you know about each other what you can tease right. about but what you what you support um, I think family to me is bigger than my household mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm lucky both of our kids live locally now oh, that's so wonderful. that's that's amazing yeah. yeah I got to spend a couple hours with you and your sister. Your husband and your your uh, yeah and brother in law. Yeah. And it was a wonderful. I could see the love all over the place. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I told Jenny you and I were were talking today. She said, "Oh, I got. I I still have another <laughs> tour." I said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's your great. your your historical knowledge of the Burlington area. I I love that was that was me. Oh, Thanks. yeah, Thanks. yeah. Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I'm. I'm. I want to. I want the audience to know more about Emerge Vermont. I think what you're doing there is phenomenal and so important. Uh, if you would spend some time talking about that, how you got involved, what it means to you, and what it means to Vermont. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that and, and a bit of the legislative things that yes. I did earlier, too, we can Please. touch on briefly. Um, Emerge, um, Madeline Kunin was speaking in California at an Emerge event. California was the first Emerge state. And she came back here and said, well, my goodness, what do you think about it being in Vermont? And um, she was teaching at UVM, so there were some students she was connected with. And, and Jill Krowinski, our current Speaker of the House, was mm -hmm. in that small group of women. And they um, said, let's do it. So they got the charter, whatever they needed to do with Emerge America. Um, and brought that here. And I knew that I had benefited by some of the democratic training um, to run for office. And also back then, um, Secretary of State Deb Markowitz brought Emily's list to Vermont. And it was a, a one-shot training, but Emily's list is early money is like yeast. So mm -hmm. the more you have, the, the bigger your capabilities are, whether yep. financial or, or uh, whatever capacity. So I knew training was important and camaraderie in that training. And um, there was an announcement that Madeline was going to um, 
launched Emerge Vermont. And I went to that and then just just stayed connected from from a distance. Mm -hmm. And um, in my last session, so 2016, um, the then ED asked if I would like to be on the advisory committee of Emerge. And I said, yeah, that, that could work. And then I decided to not seek re-election. So I had more time and got on the board of Emerge Vermont. And then um, not too long after that, once again, I was asked if I could chair it. And you know, uh -huh. that, that N-O word is, well, it's not that I don't use it. It's like, oh, this is too good to pass up. This is really <laughs> neat. So, so um, started chairing it then. And wow. um, it, 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 our, our logo, our motto is we, we recruit, train, and support Democratic women to run for office because the, when you have a seat at the table, yeah. it, it matters. And I just bought a card. It said, if you don't have a seat at the table, grab a folding chair. <laughs> <laughs> so I Absolutely. just, I, maybe, maybe some of the silliness of being a nosy, you know, I want to know what's going on. I'm the last of four kids. I, I want right. to be there. Yeah. Um, and so you, you figure out where your, yeah. where your place is or what you can add. And you started it. I, I have heard you before, but everybody has a story and every mm -hmm. story is valuable. Absolutely. It's not, it's not, oh, you've done nothing. You don't know what people have done. You exactly. don't know the background um, exactly. or what makes somebody do something. Um, sometimes I say it's amazing people are as successful as they are with the backgrounds they have mm -hmm. or with the tragedies or the traumas or okay or whatever. So I, I think the stories are fun and important and, and bringing women together and, and sharing that or, and, you know, the most accomplished women say, oh my God, I can't run for office. You know, I need this or that. And, and, yes. and men, men are, I don't know if internally they have the confidence, but we see it that mm -hmm. externally, oh yeah, well, wait, I don't need to run for select board. I can run for governor. I mean, it, it and that's kind of a joke, but it's not. Okay. So just, just showing people what their story is and what value they have coming exactly. to the table. Exactly. But but my my thing is don't have an agenda. Don't come with anything, but let's see what we can improve. I mean, mm -hmm. we all have agendas with who we are and our experiences, sure. but, but, yep. um, you know, that yes. is a setup for, for not much success in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what you're doing is so important because like you said, there are many women that if you look at them and know who they are, you say, my goodness, they could be tremendous leaders yeah. in government. Yeah. And yet they don't see that themselves. Uh, they have a different mirror. But by having an organization like this uh, and women coming together in this way, supporting each other, gives them the courage and, and the chutzpah a little bit of yeah. getting yeah. out there and yeah. doing it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, I, I uh, have a friend, a, a Republican friend, and she said, well, why can't I do it? And I said, you know, there's something about setting agendas and being in the majority. And, and there are other things you can do for training, but, but I want, a, in, in my mind, a democratic, open-minded, caring um, agenda setter. And, and you've got to be in the majority to do that. Um, right. And and you still need to listen. I'm not saying it's the only right way is the Democratic with a capital D way, but but I, I like the agenda setting and the mm -hmm. the for me the belief system and the values is just just it fits for who I am. I'm not judging others 
right. I'm saying this fits for who I am and and why I want more democratic women and and women juggle things and we understand uh, you know if you say oh child care is a women's issue it isn't it's an economic issue Absolutely. you can't get staffed working if there's right. no support and and um and help yeah you know i, yeah. I had said earlier my grandmother lived with us when my mother had mm. to go to work after my father died my grandmother was there that mm. was my child's care that's right um and we don't have multi generations in, right. in a household anymore the way we did that's in the right. 50s. Yeah. That's right. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, and and I always joke with some of the training at, at Emerge because they are a little intimidated and scared and whatever. And I say, all right, use me as the example. It took me three runs to win mm -hmm. my legislative seat. <laughs> and right. it's like, uh, why do I keep mentioning that? But, <laughs> but you know, the, the first time I ran, I lost by by only a hundred votes in a very um, secure incumbent district. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, um, I I could never run again. And and Gay Symington was recruiting people. We wanted to. Um, the the equal marriage um civil unions had passed yeah. and the democrats lost the majority in the vermont legislature and um so i was one of the recruits that they mm -hmm. had known about or whatever and um so i lost and i said well that's i never run again that's horrible and um she said no no and then the incumbent decided um uh to not run the second the second round so this would have been oh four so i thought okay i'm putting my name in you know and gay kept saying mm -hmm. you can do it and so i did and then he changed his mind at the last minute and put his petition in and uh -huh. and i lost i lost by 50 votes and i was oh embarrassed devastated and then he stepped down and the governor got to appoint his placement replacement and i i was livid for two years i was so mad and i i ran a third time a great campaign won by a couple hundred votes and um uh, and so i'm a good example to emerge um yes you, you are. know it, it, it's not always uh easy yeah but yeah. But I knew I knew that wasn't right to have done that the way the way it happened. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so you have had, you know, uh, fit, we'll call them, I don't know, failure is the wrong word, but tough times in your life when yep. things didn't work yeah. out the way you would hope. What what did you call on within yourself to get through those times? You know? uh. I just said this to somebody yesterday and I hadn't thought about it in a long, long time. Um, and I don't dwell on the past, but you know, my, my father passing away and moving to Florida and those changes, I made him my guardian angel on my shoulder. Mm. So um, if, girls were mean to me i would say daddy <laughs> mm -hmm. make them trip or i i would you know <laughs> i'm kind of whatever a little girl yep. thing so i think yep. i i think i didn't feel alone gary i think That's i it. created him yeah. i don't know i was only two i you know yep. i i know the stories of him so yep. i think not feeling alone mm. um made <clears throat> made a difference mm. um certainly reaching out to friends and people um i wouldn't say you know i was like devastated or whatever when when growing up but but i think i i made things work however they yeah, they yeah. could and and that was a way that's if, a wonderful you know, it, it, yeah, I, I I don't know. I haven't. I mean, I guess I just said it out 
in real public now, but but it's funny how how that was and and um, always talking. I mean, I talk to myself. I talk to whoever. So so I think that fit with with who who I am and and uh, um, yeah. None of us need to be alone. I mean, alone Absolutely. time is good, but but. Right. You know, it, 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 when we crossed on the bike path, of yep. just hello and the connections, that, that's exactly. just too important. Yeah, yeah. When we um, we uh, talking a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that in your legislative days, and you spent 12 years in the legislature, that's six terms, that's a lot of time. F five terms, five, five terms. terms, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, a decade. A decade, okay. And you talked about the one of the roles you played in that role was to connect people and ideas to to move to solution. You were all mm -hmm. about let's get this solved somehow. <clears throat> you talk a little bit more about that. Ideas again at the table or wherever. I, ideas are shared. And rather than saying, well, that's stupid, or I, I might mumble that under my own breath or sure. in my head, but, you know, okay, I hadn't thought of that idea, or, or you have had this experience and you bring that. So trying to figure out, um, there's a, a saying we always use, don't, get, don't let excellence get in the way of good. Um, inch inch your way forward. You know, I was not in the legislature for civil unions, and I was for equal marriage. That was ten years mm. of inching our mm. way, and then now it's like, what, what? What? That wasn't acceptable. You know, it just so. Right. So I think the solutions are are important. Um, the the path. Um, is is what's important to focus on and and i say sometimes it's not what happens or what gets said it's how mm -hmm. when you have a, a a person who's a a, a collaborator you can get more done i mean mm -hmm. my way of my way might be right but i better listen to you yeah. or we're not going to get anywhere yeah. and 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 certainly every one of us i hope has an ego but it doesn't have my my ego is in the process the 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 building of robin's nest i had a big part but it was us the the building of of anything is is mm -hmm. teamwork you know mm -hmm. the turning point center dinners watching everybody come together from different avenues yeah. was it was you know inspiring mm -hmm. um so i think you, you have to learn from others mm -hmm. um and and listen to why they're saying that or you know mm -hmm. somebody comes in so angry it's like what is that all about well i don't know what happened an hour ago or a year ago in that person's life right so try and find out and and i mean that it's it's not yeah. um i i do try it i i don't always but but mm -hmm. i i try to understand why and mm -hmm. what the 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 newer stuff in education is not to ask a child um why'd you do that but what's going on um right. you know yeah. there is example after example of that um, the What's transitions behind of, situations yeah, rather yeah, than yeah. the words you're hearing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is there anything from your Syrian culture that has informed you to be the person you are today? Well, I think there was pride in in the Persian culture. My and and I'm a Syrian, so so from from um, Iran, that's okay. where where they came from. And I think mm -hmm. I think um, my father's father was a man who wasn't educated but could speak 
seven languages and could write wow. many of those. So he was a go-between, you know, in the, in the early 1900s, oh. when he came, he could sign people's um, work permits. So it, if you were still in, in Iran, you had a document that said there was a job waiting for you. Hmm. So you could get a, a, a immigration paper. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not sure there was always jobs, but there was a network. And yeah. I think the pride, the pride of that um, mm -hmm. is, is something um, that, that we felt um, involvement and, and maybe, um, you know, caring for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we had a uh, beach house down in Old Saybrook, Connecticut for, you know, I was probably only seven or eight when we didn't have it anymore, but it was such a part of what I loved. And Saturdays and Sundays, the beach house was mobbed with all the Assyrians coming and we had shish kebab and, you know, so yeah. food and family and all that yeah, was, yeah. was important. <laughs> that must have been wonderful. Yeah. I'm an Italian boy. My mother boy. said it was too much. My mother said it was too much. <laughs> I liked it. I didn't cook. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, oh. That's great. Thank you. So um, if you had a magic wand, Joan, what, when you think about the future, what, anything you want to accomplish or do that is out there for you? I think... The environment is something we have to pay so much attention to. You know, I'm more of a people person, but the people won't have a world if we do this um, mm -hmm. destruction. So I think that's important. I think paths are paved and being open to what what is next or what comes, um, what I could help with or learn from. Um, those things. I, I never thought, oh, I want to be a legislator. Oh, I want to do this. It, it was more as it, as it offered itself. Um, no. I mean, I think the biggest thing was policy. I knew I liked that because, again, making decisions that put things in place and in direction that, that are helpful. No. No. Um, but, but, um, yeah, no. get so, through this pandemic, right? Yeah, well, I think it seems like the doors are opening finally a little bit. I'm yeah. hoping we can continue getting people vaccinated, but it's uh, it's a relief to go outside and not have masks on all the time. And all, yeah. I know it. Absolutely. I know. Yeah. yeah. So I try to say, what have we learned from this? What what important exactly. things and. You know, some of the the um, uh, um, virtual meetings or this opportunity, yeah. um, you know, it still works. It might be different if we were in person, but it still works. Absolutely. And I think we've got to look at the, the, the pluses of these things. That's right. I mean, when you think about it, in terms of the environment, by meeting over Zoom, sometimes you save 12, 15 cars from having to drive hundreds of miles to yep. go to a meeting, yep. Yep. turn around and go home. Yeah. So early on, did, there are. Yeah. Early on, did you read that um, you could see the fish in the canals of Venice? And in China, you could see stars that they haven't seen for, they didn't even wow. remember. Um, yeah. So things were, were opening up. Um, yes. That that were maybe subtle, but oh my, yes, <laughs> pretty absolutely. neat. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, smog yeah. was lifted from cities that had been. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want to turn, if we can, to some of the maybe more fun things of life here. You have, <laughs> I know you like to walk because I've seen you on the bike path. You have <laughs> other advocations that you enjoy doing. Well, I always say that if I don't get my two weeks of beach rental in Ogunquit, Maine, that I, <laughs> I will fall apart 
and I will need a lot of help if I don't get that. So the ocean to me yeah. is is so replenishing, so rejuvenating and mm -hmm. and that's that's important. I love that. Um, I I say I don't like to make dinner, but I love to cook. So mm -hmm. as you know, you have people over deciding what you want for dinner and there's just the two of us eating is not that yeah. fun, but, but, you know, yeah. organizing for, for a gathering is, mm. is always fun. And, and the walks, I love them alone and I love them with people, um, mm. both, both ways. Um, yeah. um, yeah. Gardening. My garden looks beautiful. My flowers oh, are, are both my husband and I tease that, you know, he's the gardener. No, I am the gardener. And, and we both we both love it. But um, the peonies right now, the lilacs before. I mean, the the cycle of life, Gary, is is yeah. interesting. It sounds a little schmaltzy, but it's no. it's really neat. It you know, neat. the crocus come, then the daffodils and the tulips, and looking forward to everything. And I love fall. I I don't love knowing i love winter but i don't love knowing it's coming right right <laughs> <laughs> and it stays for a long time <laughs> yes yep yeah after yeah. after june 21st i said oh the days are getting shorter but I boy, know. after december <laughs> i'm thrilled i i think it was a minute longer today <laughs> <laughs> That's right. so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have any special birthdays in your life that you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I, my birthday should be a national holiday. I drive my family crazy, just crazy. <laughs> yes, I have had good birthdays. Um, oh, good. The last one was was February in my 70th. And, and I didn't know what I wanted. I uh -huh. just, I didn't know. And I... I just said, you know what? Believe it or not, I'm letting my birthday go this year. We can't get together. Yeah. It won't. I just, and my daughter, who is very much my kindred spirit, got yeah. her brother and father together. And anyway, we had a drive by. People oh. came. A, a friend said, let's go for a walk. So I said, okay, come at. I yeah. said, what time are you coming? She tells me, and we start walking down the driveway. And I see commotion. I'm on a dead end street. So <laughs> no commotion. couldn't figure that out. <laughs> oh my God. Well, it oh. was, it was just perfect. It oh, was, yeah. you know, and, and we laughed. And and again, my husband is is not so social. And I always say we balance each other. Well, he loved it. People waving and going by. They didn't have to come in the house. We didn't need it. We, Sarah had had little party favors for them, yeah. but, oh. but you know, it was oh, we laughed and laughed, and it was a twenty-five degree sunny Sunday that that we did this on, and and I was totally surprised. So, so that one was a big one. Yeah, yeah. Bravo to Sarah. Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's great. Both my kids, you know, yep. Yep. Peter, Peter as well, and his world and business, and I, I think you you take who they are, and and you know, maybe pride in in what they've done, but but when they screw up, I go, well, that wasn't because of me. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so you have to look, balance it a little. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, they're patient with me. That's important. They're patient uh -huh. with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is there anything we've missed that you would like to share? I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. Not not for this that you know recorded, but the the thoughts. I mean, I think my 70th birthday was mm -hmm. was a bit of that as well but mm -hmm. you know it matters what we do it Absolutely. matters and and so i i thank you for that and in, in a humbling way um okay. i love that you've recreated who you are with with this and yeah. you know i i 
didn't put into words what you did, but you read the obituaries and said, why didn't I know these people? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, so I, I am humbled and honored that, that you called and, and, uh, and what it's done is help me see that you've got to, you've got to participate in life. What'd you say? I engage. I, I didn't yes. think of it that way, but yeah. Yes. So thank you. No, well, you're welcome. no, you're I look forward you. to your, your other people and, you know, seeing what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, how about yeah. last words of wisdom to the audience from your <laughs> perspective? Oh, maybe back to that. It's not what you do, but how you do it. Mm. With a little, a little grace, a little fun, a little, you know, you can do hard, hard things, but when you do them respectfully, um, it matters. I, I and and that's not easy. It's not yeah, easy. That's right. Um, that's right. but 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 try to take a deep breath and remember that. I guess. Thank you, Joan mm -hmm. Lennis. Ah, thank you, you Gary DeCarlo. <laughs> you, you have led a wonderful life, and I look forward to the future and see what you do. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Yes, your, your future too, Gary. <laughs> okay. We'll stay connected. <laughs> we'll stay connected. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Take all right. care. Yeah.